Today we're going to talk about glycogeometries and bonding theories. You might want to grab two things. One is your course calendar that has a list of hybridizations on the back, and also your note, note packet. We're going to look at section 12.8 and 12.9. If you look at the back of 12.8 and 12.9, there's something on the back called VESPER. Well, let's write down what that stands for. It stands for valence, that's a V, V is a valence, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So VESPER, valence shell electron, electron pair repulsion theory. So how is this important? Well, electrons we know repel, so what the shape is going to happen with the shape is electrons are going to move as far away from each other as possible. And when they move, they're going to ha have an attached atom to the central atom. And so that's going to give, you, give us a different arrangement or shape. So the best arrangement of a given electron domain is one that minimizes repulsion among the atoms. So molecular shapes determine properties, and the bonding pairs and the lone pairs determine the molecular shape. So what determines the shape of a molecule? Simply put, the electron pairs, whether, whether they be bonding, which we call bonding pairs, or non-bonding, which we call lone pairs, are going to repel each other. So all electrons are negative and they repel. So by assuming the electron pairs are placed as far from each other as possible, we can predict molecular shape. So for example, in the molecule that's drawn here, we have three bonding pairs, three bonding pairs, and one lone pair, or, or non-bonding pair. And that's what we're going to look at to determine shape. So how do they, each of these work? Well, on your sheet, we label these as structural domains or structural pairs. Uh, the way we're going to term them in this video and the way we'll talk about them from now on is we're going to call them electron domains because that's going to take into account the fact that it's going to include three things. One, it's going to include bonding pairs. Two, it's going to include lone pairs. And three, the idea that multiple bonds, whether they're double or triple, are going to count, triple are going to count as one. So we can refer to electron pairs as electron domains. In double or triple bonds, all electron electrons share between two atoms on the same side of, this, of the central atom, therefore they're called, it's considered one electron domain. So count and see how many electron domains you, you think are in SO2 in this um, structure that's drawn here. Hopefully you selected three. This molecule has three electron domains around the central atom. There's a double bond, that's one electron domain. There's a lone pair, that's a second electron uh, domain. And then there's the single bond, that's the other electron domain. Now one thing that's not shown here that we would normally put is there are lone pairs on the oxygen that are not shown, on uh, two, four uh, lone pairs on the double bond oxygen, and then, or four electrons, two lone pairs, uh, and then there are six extra oxygens around the single bond oxygen, which give us eight. So electron domain geometries. Uh, uh, so this right here summarizes there are electron domain geometries for two, three, and four domains around the central atom. So for example, uh, all one has to do is count the number of electron domains in the Lewis structure. For example, if you drew NH3, you see there are four electron domains here. And so this gives us really a, a tetrahedral arrangement of electrons. There's four different areas of electrons. There's three that are inv involved in bonding, and then we have the lone pair. So the geometry will be one that corresponds to that with the number of electron domains. So first we draw, we look at the formula, then we draw the Lewis structure, then we look at the electron domain geometry, and then from that we determine the molecular geometry, and this is what we normally write down. Electron doma uh, domain geometry is often not the shape of the molecule. However, the molecular geometry is defined by the position of the atoms. Uh, basically, look, you're looking at the bonding and the lone pair electrons. So, for example, with each uh, electron domain, there might be more than one molecular geometry. For example, on your sheet, you see there's a tetrahedral arrangement for CH4. We have four things around a central atom here. But notice we have four things around the central atom here with NH3, but three of those are bonding pairs and we have a lone pair. And once again down here with water, we have four things around a central atom. All of these are still, notice every single one of these electron geometries would be tetrahedral, but when you look at the molecular geometries, actually end up having three different shapes. 
So what we're going to do is go step by step with the three different uh, sets of electron domains that are listed on the back of your calendar and explain each one. So first we have something that has two electron domains and that would be linear. So what happens with two electron domains, they want to get as far away from each other as possible. So we see this angle right here. That angle would be 180 degrees. And there's two bonding pairs. There's no lone pairs. And so the geometry is, lim uh, is linear. Now an example, that would be CO2. We see that drawn there. So in this domain, there's only one molecular geometry linear. Now notice we've seen this in the lab as well anytime there are two atoms in a molecule the molecule will be linear no matter what the electron domain is so if you have two atoms it's always going to be linear now let's go to the next one which is three electron domains around the central atom so with that's called the trigonal planar electron domain so there's two different shapes you get from this and one of those is when you have every single one is bonded pair. So for example, if you have three bonded pairs and no lone pairs in with three electron domains, that would be what we call trigonal planar. And then there's an example of that which is BF3, boron trifluoride. Now the shape that or the angle that goes with this, every single one of these angles would be the same, would be 120 degrees. And at that angle those electrons are as far from each other as possible. And if you look, also, there's one other shape that we get from this. And that shape is when you have two bonding pairs and one lone pair. And when you have two bonding pairs and one lone pair, notice a lone pair is up here, the bonding pair is down here, the shape would be bent. Now what happens, that actually, notice we said this is 120, this one would actually be less than 120 because that lone pair actually resides closer to the central atom and so it forces these other atoms to move closer. So for example in the drawn structure here, NO2, or that's actually a nitrite uh, polyatomic ion, these two oxygen atoms would be just a little bit closer because this lone pair is very close to the nitrogen. So there are two molecular geomet geometries here. One is trigonal planar if all the electron uh, domains are bonding so that would be two bonding pairs, no lone pairs and then the other shape is bent if one of the domains is non-bonding. Now let's look at the next shape is when, which is when we have the tetrahedral electron domain. There are four shapes, this is our last one, there are four shapes, I'm sorry, three shapes on this one. One is when we have four bonding pairs and no lone pairs and so everything gets, uh, get as, gets at a distance which is equal uh, for every single atom. And the distance we have for this would be 109.5 degrees. And so what happens, that would be the same for every single atom uh, around the central, every single atom that's around the central atom. Now the, uh, the an example of that would be CH4. The second shape we get from this is when we have two bonding domains and one non-bonding or lone pair. So with this, an example of that would be ammonia. You see here we have three bonding pairs that are down here, and then right at the top we have the one lone pair. That one lone pair, that would give us an angle of less than 109.5. And then finally, the last shape that we get from this is uh, one such as we see with water, where you have two bonding pairs, two lone pairs. And so for this one we get a bent structure, and that gives us a, two, uh, a very partially negative uh, end at, around the oxygen and a partially positive end toward the hydrogen, but it, it concentrates electrons on one side. So the three shapes we get from this are the tetrahedral with all bonding pairs, the trigonal pyramidal when you have one bonding pair and, I'm sorry, three bonding pairs and one lone pair, and then bent if there's two bonding and two lone. So let's look at a little bit about the shape here. Now how does this, the different angles come about? Non-bonding pairs are physically larger than bonding pairs because those electrons are closer to the central atom. So that's why when you go from uh, CH4 to ammonia to water, the angle decreases. Now notice they've written specific numbers here for these two. But I'll, I'd like you to just memorize three numbers for us. One is 180, the other is 120, and the other is 109.5. Now what we're going to do instead of memorizing 107, we'll just say this is less than 109.5 and this one uh, degrees and we'll say this one is less than less than 109.5 degrees and that way we'll know this angle is a little bit smaller because there's two lone pairs and so the other thing that we see from this sometimes we'll look at larger molecules we had a couple of these on the lab 
And so for larger molecules, we t tend to talk about the geometry on a particular atom rather than the geometry of the, of the entire molecule. For example, if you look at this molecule, there's really three central atoms. So around the first carbon, we have what we, a tetrahedral with four things bonded to it. And that's 109.5. Around the second carbon, we really have three bonding areas. So that's a trigonal planar with an angle of 120. And then finally, on the third oxygen, we actually have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. And so that would be a tetrahedral electron, but the shape around that would actually be bent around the last one. So I think this concludes our last one. Okay, the larger, and this is just another drawing of that. We see the tetrahedral around the carbon, the trigonal plane around this carbon, and then here we have the, uh, the bench around the oxygen. So this, sense, this approach makes sense when we have large molecules. So this would conclude our discussion of shapes. Uh, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.